And how have you been since I last saw you? Well, a few of the usual usual problems. A routine consultation at this practice in Newport, Pembrokeshire. Whether it's arthritis or angina, this place claims it can treat it. The difference here is the treatments are all made of herbs. We often see people who have possibly gone to the GP or the orthodox route and maybe it hasn't worked for them and they, or they feel that they want to explore alternatives. We can give a different viewpoint and a different way of treatment. But in future, getting your hands on herbal medicine might not be quite so simple. That's because next year a new European law comes into force that's going to shake up the way places like this do business. The EU directive will mean that in future, herbal medicines will have to be licensed, much the same as pharmaceutical drugs. It will restrict the way that we can practice currently. It will restrict the um, number of herbs that we can prescribe for people. Do you think that your business will be able to survive? I don't know the answer to that. But you're worried about the future? Very worried about the future, because herbal medicine is an integral part of people's lives. We're part of the community here. Herbalists are now calling on the UK government to intervene. A consultation on whether to regulate herbal medicine, along with Chinese medicine and acupuncture, closed recently, and a decision is imminent. What herbalists want from the Department of Health is professional status. That would put them on a par with radiographers and paramedics as registered healthcare professionals. A lot of us use herbalists. We use different herbal medicines, alternative medicines. It's something that we have done in Wales for, for many centuries. It's part of a, a long tradition that goes way back in Wales. And it's something that I know from the public response that I've had, that people in Wales want to protect. And, of course, the herbal practitioners themselves are very uh, highly respected people. They, they are professionals, in, in a sense, in the way that they operate and they deserve that recognition from the government. But does herbal medicine actually work? Not according to this academic, who held the prestigious Chair of Pharmacology at University College London for almost 20 years. Herbalism consists largely of giving an ill-defined mixture of drugs of unknown, in an unknown dose and of unknown safety and unknown efficacy. So it really is, as far as medicine goes completely uh, unreliable and possibly dangerous at times. Whether or not there are cures in these potions, patients seem pleased with the results. I've just bought red rice yeast capsules, which I use for um, my cholesterol levels. I take this with an artichoke compound, and instead of taking statins, it's actually kept my cholesterol levels down. I use them especially with my children, my baby and little boy, and they've basically worked um, for chest problems or for coughs and it's so fabulous to have this here on the doorstep in Newport. I've um, used them for a variety of things and I would um, go to herbal medicines probably first before conventional medicines. Critics though say patients may be doing themselves more harm than good. You have people advocating, saying, claiming that they can cure things that they can't cure. That may prevent people getting a regular treatment that can cure them. Uh, the, the only effect of regulation would be to give us a sort of appearance of government endorsement to things that don't work, and that, that's madness. The UK government said a decision on whether to give herbalists the professional status they crave will come as soon as possible. For the herbalists themselves, it's probably time for a few cups of relaxing herbal tea. With their futures in the balance, they've a nervous wait ahead.